Scott, you've got a new featherweight champion in your promotion. Just break down her performance and what you thought of her, Julia Budd. I mean, it, it was electric in there, and uh, I think that uh, Cyborg came in and she looked super explosive and looked really good. Julia looked great too, and I, uh, as the rounds went on, I think that uh, Cyborg started dominating the fight and you know still her will on Julia. So that's the way I saw it. But that first round, anything could happen, man. Something could have got caught and you not know, get a finish, but. It was uh, it was a great fight. It was really intense in there, and proud of both those ladies, Julie Bud. Great fighter. She is uh, somebody that's had the belt for a long time and deserves to have the respect that you know that she got. And I see, I think now everybody can see why she's got garnered so much respect among her peers and the fight fans. As a promoter, obviously Julia was your homegrown star that you guys built up, but Chris Cyborg's the big signee that brings so much attention. Moving forward, how do you balance those two in promoting them with their next matchups? I mean, you know, this is, in this business you have to win. And I know Julia is just, you know, she's going to want to fight again right away. And, um, you know, let's see what happens down the line, you know? I mean, if she can get a couple wins on her belt and uh, Cyborg gets <laughs> fights, and they might see each other down the road later if they want it. You know, that's, that's something that right now, the night, the night of the fight, it's really, we can't determine what's going to happen between those two in the future. So you Scott? mentioned the Grand Prix. Uh, how do you feel about that idea now that, you know, the fight's over? Uh, when you say Grand Prix, you mean she'd like, like to be she in the wanted, Grand Prix? Yeah, she wanted a featherweight one. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think we have uh, eight girls that are solid. But I'll tell you what, after that performance, you know, it's, 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 she's going to be a, a tough fight for anybody in that weight class. So, you know, they better, they better, they better bring it because she's, she's a beast. She's dangerous and explosive, you know, and, and she looked great. I mean, she looked like she didn't miss a beat, in my opinion. So to me, that's why I call her the greater, greatest fighter of all time uh, in the female division because, you know, I, I think you guys saw it with your eyes. Scott, Scott she seemed to admit tonight that the biggest thing she learned about herself in this performance was patience, if you can talk about that. Because you're talking about, she, she had a game plan, a strategy, mm -hmm. she wasn't berserker. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, she's a great draw for you and your organization. Mm -hmm. So her at the peak of her powers is presumably a great thing. Yeah, and I think what, you, what she's talking about is, you know, when she got caught in the fight, uh, you know, uh, in, this is, when she get, gets caught, she has, like almost like a immediate reaction to come, to come right back, you know, and um, I think she took her time and she, you know, she, she waited for some of those barrages that uh, came on her and, and was very patient, a lot more patient than I've seen her in the past. So, you know, she's growing, continue to grow, can, can continue to learn and become a be better martial arts fighter. Hey Scott, uh, can you comment on her longevity, the fact that she won her first title in 2009 and here she is almost 11 years later and she's still winning fights and as you say getting better and that's not rare for somebody at the highest level to stay there for 10 or 10 plus years. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that's a testament to her will and also her work ethic, you know, and uh, you know, she, she's always in shape, she's always training, she's always, you know, working on getting better as a fighter and that's 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 my view on Chris Cyborg and my interpretation of my experience with her is that uh, she's always trying to get better, always trying to learn, and um, you know I think that that's why the longevity has been good to her. You even think like when you look at Fedor, even as an example, you know he was dominant that you know the first decade of this uh, century, and then he kind of faded off as it turned into the new one. She still looks like she's as good as she was in yeah. 2009. Yes. It's, it's rare that you see that explosiveness that you saw tonight, still 10 years later, uh, from an athlete. And you know, she, you gotta give, give, give it to her because, like I said, that's just hard work, determination, and you know, her will of making it happen. And I think that uh, you know, we signed her because I felt she could still do it. She felt she could still do it. And she proved it tonight, she could still do it. Scott, who are some of the fighters that impressed you the most tonight? There was a lot of amazing fights. Yeah, I mean, Caldwell surprised yeah. me, yeah. right? I mean, let's be honest, we thought that that might work out the other way. Um, but in a fight, anything could happen. I think that's one of the fights that I I, uh, I thought maybe could have a different outcome. But 
he went and did his thing. He wants to fight for that million dollars, you know, at the, at the end of the year. The one thing I did like is that backflip off of the of the cage. I think I've ever seen that. that I told my guys, please, don't, let's just stop that. Like, we don't need to do this anymore. How about the prelims? Any one of the prelims that stand out for you? I mean, Pico, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Pico's back. I mean, he looked great. He had a great knockout. And I thought he was, again, another fighter that had a lot of patience in there. And he wasn't just rushing in trying to, to finish. I mean, he... He looked like he took a step forward in the development of an athlete as, as a martial arts fighter. Uh, we got Emily King that, that opened up the main card, and she upset uh, Ava Knight as well. And really, to tell you the truth, we got Ava, we've got Emily, we've got Carrie. I mean, could we see a strawweight division here in Bellator? I mean, right now we're going to focus on the divisions that we have, but um, it doesn't mean that we will rule it out in the future. But for right now, you know, we have the 125 pound weight class with the Lindy McFarland. And we have Cyborg at 145, and all the girls that you know will fight her. But um, we love super fights, you know. Ava Knight had some things to prove tonight, and um, you know she fought a, a girl that was had some great ground skill and, and and beat her. So, you know, back to the drawing board. I know she'll bounce back and you know train hard. And this is not an easy sport, as you guys all know. It's a very difficult sport, and so you know, well, we we uh, wish her luck and and you know and. Training and maybe three, four months down the line, we could have her come back. Scott, Scott, we asked you a month.